Namo Buddhaya, this is Apinav and I welcome you. In this video, I am discussing my learnings from Middle Discourses 97. This is with Dhananjani, also known as Dhananjani Sutta. Uh, the link to the discourse is given in the description. So basically here is, this discourse is about a conversation uh, that is between Venerable Sariputta, Buddhist, one of the Buddha's chief disciples, and a, a, a Brahmin named uh, Dhananjani. Uh, so basically, the context is that Venerable Sariputta was was wandering uh, with a large sangha of mendicants around uh, Rajagaha and there he met a Brahmin and he asked the, you know, he had his conversation with the Brahmin and uh, uh, Sariputta asks that uh, at the rice checkpoint there is a Brahmin named Dhananjani. I hope he is healthy and well. So he said, uh, the Brahmin said, yes, he is healthy and well. But then Sariputta asked, is he diligent? So the Brahmin said, how he could possibly be diligent? Dhananjani robs the Brahmins and householders in the name of the king. And he robs the king in the name of the Brahmins and householders. His wife, a lady of faith who he married from a family of faith, has passed away. And he has taken a new wife who has no faith. So when he, Venerable Sariputta knows that Dhananjani is negligent, so he, he, he said that I will try to meet him. So once when Sariputta was um, was going on the arms round, he met Dhananjani and asked him, I hope you are diligent Dhananjani. So Dhananjani said, how could I possibly be diligent Master Sariputta? I have to provide for my mother and father, my wives and children and my bond servants and workers and I have to make the proper offering to friends and colleagues, relatives and king, guests, ancestors, deities and king. And then this body must also be fattened and built up. So now Sariputta says, so he was making this kind of a logic that because I have to do all this, I cannot live a life of the Dhamma and uh, I cannot be diligent. So uh, uh, Sariputta said, what do you think Dhananjani? Suppose someone was, was to behave in an unprincipled and unjust way for the sake of their parents. Because of this, the wardens of hell would drag them to hell. Could they get out of being dragged to hell by pleading that they acted for the sake of their parents? Or could their parents save them by pleading the, that the acts had been done for their sake? So that was a direct question to Sariputta. That when you go to the hell realm after your acts, will you be able to plead ignorance of the fact that I was doing it for my parents? Or will your parents be able to come to the hell realm and take you out of the hell realm? So uh, 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 Dhananjani said, no Master Sariputta. Rather, even as they were wailing in the wardens of hell, he would Rather, even as they were wailing, the wardens of hell would cast them down to hell. Right? So then, uh, uh, similarly, uh, uh, Sariputta said that it's not because only for your parents, but for your wives, children, bond servants, friends, colleagues, guests, ancestors, deities, fattening and building up the body. All these excuses that are making. If you go to hell, would anyone of them come and save you? He said no. So, when then Venerable Sariputta said, What do you think is better, Dhananjani? Someone who, for the sake of their parents, behaves in an unprincipled and unjust manner, or someone who behaves in a principled and just manner? So, uh, Dhananjani said that someone who behaves in a principled and just manner for the sake of parents, for principled and moral conduct is better than in principled in unprincipled and moral conduct. So, basically, Venerable Sariputta was trying to convey that if you are doing anything for the sake of your parents, do the just and principled conduct, not the unjust and unprincipled conduct. Then, then uh, Venerable Sariputta tried to educate him that there are other livelihoods that are both profitable and legitimate. By means of these, it's possible to get fatten and build up your body avoid bad deeds and practice the path of goodness. So basically, uh, Sariputta was creating this, you know, opening his mind that there are many other right livelihoods that, so this is a very good sutta on life, right livelihood. One of the noble eightfold paths. Uh, Buddha said that practice live li right livelihood, a livelihood which does not cause any harm or suffering to others. So Venerable Sariputta was trying to open up the mind of uh, Dhananjani that, see, I am telling you that if you do bad deeds, you will go to lower realm, right? You could go to hell realm and nobody will be able to save you. And you can do good 
activities, good deeds, good livelihood, which will achieve all your goals of taking care of your parents, fattening your body and everything. Right? So he was giving that. So, and then there is this thing that after some time, Dhananjani became sick, suffering, and and then uh, he uh, he called up uh, Venerable Sariputta who went and meet, met him. And uh, when he went and met, so Dhananjani said, because Dhanan, uh, because he was able, the Venerable Sariputta might have been able to see what was what could be the fate of uh, Dhananjani. So he said, do you what do you think is better, hell or animal realm? So he said, animal realm. Then he said, what is the better hell, animal or ghost realm? He said, ghost realm. There are 31 realms of existence that Buddha said which exist. There are many, many realms. He questioned, questioned, questioned. Till he questioned that what, what is a better realm? Gods who control the creations of others or the Brahma realm. So uh, Dhananjani was happy that Master Sariputta speaks of the Brahma realm. So then Sariputta told him the way to reach the Brahma realm, which is the Brahma Viharas. So uh, how, what is Brahma Viharas? Firstly, a mendicant spreading a heart full of love to one, second, third, fourth direction. Same way, ev everywhere he spreads, spreads the uh, heart of love to the whole world. Abundant, expansive, limitless, free of enmity and ill will. This is a path to company with the Brahma. So he gave him this kind of a insight that if you do this, you will reach company of the Brahma. Then when Ma Sariputta uh, came to the Buddha, Buddha kind of admonished Sariputta that uh, mendicants, Sariputta after ed establishing Dhananjani in the inferior Brahma realm, got up from his seat and left while there was still more work left to do. So see, understand this. Buddha never advocated remaining within the samsara realm. Right? That should not be the goal. If the our goal should be moving out of samsara. And in process of moving out of samsara, we may become like a once returner or a non returner, we may we may get born in higher realms, higher worlds, Brahma worlds, where we continue our learning and we take our uh, ex extinguishment from the samsara. So our task here is to go to deepen our knowledge in the Dhamma and move towards the final extinguishment, which is Nibbana. So there are various stages of extinguishment. You can check my video on that. Basically, stream entry, which is like you enter the stream to awakening. Once you enter, then you are bound for awakening, right? And that should be our first goal as students of the Buddha, to become a stream enterer. Second is uh, once returner, third is non-returner, fourth is full arhanship. So Buddha basically tried to say that there was more work to do. Like what you have done is that you have fit him into the Brahma world, but there was more work to you could, you could have done being there, lying there with him at his death time. So that kind of a feedback that Buddha gave him. So that's why it's like said that when a person is dying, at that time his state of mind should be good because that state of the mind it generally determines the next rebirth. So that's why I said in some of the uh, Buddhist families, what they do is that at the time of a person's death, they, re they recite the Buddhist chants or the Sati sorry, Satipatthana Sutta. Middle list course is 10. Right? Satipatthana Sutta they recite that sutta to that person so that hopefully that person hears and he becomes mindful, right? So this this is where a small point where Buddha kind of, uh, not, it's not coming out directly as an admonishment, but Buddha state that there would have been more work to do, right? So this is the sutta. I hope this was useful. The essential learning from this is that we should not make excuses for taking up a path which is not in line with the Dhamma just because of the material concerns and everything. We have to be in this material world with all its problems, but we have to try and live a life of the Dhamma, right? Because this life is precious, right? And the more refined, the more, you know, the human consciousness that we have, it creates the more karmas if we are hurting anyone, right? So live a life according to Dharma. And if we have been living life in not in accordance with the Dharma, it's time to give it up and move in the right direction, right? So I hope this video was useful. Do share your insights and thoughts in the comment section. Thank you for watching this video. Namo Buddhaya. Namo Buddhaya.